Good morning, and welcome to Birmingham First Church of the Nazarene. And I am not Pastor Huey Davis this morning. My name is Brett Meredith, and I'm a former Salvation Army officer, and it's a privilege to fill the pulpit this morning. This is our home church now. Um, and I want to welcome those who are here and those who may be watching from home today. As we enter into worship, allow our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking to us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for so many things that we can't even remember that we need to be thankful for, for the breath in our lungs, to have our right minds, to have shelter and food, for all of the things that we need to be thankful for and sometimes overlook. Father, we ask that you would open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear from your spirit today. Let your words speak. Bless us all. It's in your name we pray. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting Sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path goes from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from. Holy, holy, 
usually has his uh, iPad up here, but I'm technologically challenged. I know that probably sounds funny, but I am. So we've been talking in an undeserving hero. What does that mean? Well, when I think about who is it that comes to mind when you think of people who are truly the bottom of society's barrel. They're not well thought of. You know, people like Michael Avenatti, when you think about current events. Or maybe Stormy Daniels or Harvey Weinstein. How about just about any politician? Let's be honest. Don't want to lie in church. In preparation for this message, I was thinking about this, and I read a story about a little boy in second grade who had his teacher who was just kind of angry and evil. No student liked her. The parents didn't like her. And any of the faculty who would admit to it didn't like her either, all because she was just kind of a nasty person. She was a little older. She had a medical condition, which made her look even worse to her students. There was a kid in the class who just didn't have an ideal life. Terrible mother, no friends, sad stuff, really. He had a problem keeping his stuff organized. And you can think back and remember those days, trying to keep organized in elementary school. He lacked things like the folders he needed to put in the binder, so his papers were kind of strewn throughout his backpack and just tossed into his desk, a mess all in all. And a lot of the kids' desks weren't as organized as they should be, but this boy's kind of was the worst. The teacher, while sitting at her desk at the front of the classroom, called out to the boy and said, You need to turn in this paper. You haven't done it yet. Well, he lifted up the lid of his desk, and he began a search through all the papers. After a minute or two, she asked, what was taking so long to get that paper up there? And the poor kid was panicking because he just couldn't seem to find it after shuffling through all the paper a dozen or so times. She started to raise her voice about, what the problem was, and she started down the young man's aisle where he was sitting. Now, the boy was in full emergency mode looking for this paper. Almost in tears, he knew the storm that was coming. Almost in tears. Once she got next to him, she saw the disaster of his desk. She was livid and started a tirade about what a mess it was and why it was like that. At the peak of the berating, the kid had frozen with his head low, tears rolling down his cheeks. She grabbed the desk by the leg and flipped it over, and everything went onto the floor. This table flipping act was done in a packed classroom. It was kind of surprising that no one else was injured when she flipped the desk over. 
she mutters to him or muttered to him to clean it up. And for the rest of the period, through tears and sobs and shaking hands, he cleaned it up while the rest of the class sat in total silence. And the teacher had gone back to her desk. When I thought of the bottom of society's barrel, my mind also went to this person and how she treated a young boy, a fellow human being. We might think of people like these as kind of beyond the pale, having no scruples, no ethics, understanding for no one but themselves. You've known these folks. Maybe you've been these folks. There have been moments I've been there. We think of them as irredeemable, not good church-going material, hell-bound maybe. Not well thought of in most corners of society today. And, you know, today's hero or undeserving hero actually happens to be one of these type of people. Do you know who it is? Has it struck you yet? Probably not. We're going to uh, take a quick look at a man who sold his own people to work for the enemy and to enrich himself. Have you figured it out yet? Well, let's take a journey for a little while with Zacchaeus, that wee little man. We all know the Sunday school song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to, for the Lord he wanted to see. You know, you remember it? Most of us do. Well, Zacchaeus is an unlikely hero of the faith. Maybe we should just call him an also-ran. But there is something to learn from him. Something for every one of us to learn. And that's why we're going to talk about him today. If we'll put the scripture up, I'll be re reading from the New International Version this morning. We get it? There we go. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, This is us and all of our friends, all of our church-going folks. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. He shouldn't be doing that, should he? That's not in there. But Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. We can probably relate to Zacchaeus more than we would like to admit. And I'm not going to ask anyone to raise their hands this morning. He was sinful and greedy. We are also sinful and greedy at times. Zacchaeus became rich by using his possessions and position to take what he wanted. This left the people overtaxed and resentful of this man who had been stealing from them. Imagine that. 
And since he sold his soul to the Roman authorities at the expense of his own people, this left his own people powerless to stop him from doing it. Whether we realize it or not, just like Zacchaeus, our natural tendency is to look out for number one, me, myself, and I, and take whatever we can get away with. Yes, as we will see, Zacchaeus had the potential to, need, to look beyond himself, but he hadn't done it thus to that point. But we find that he embraces it here. We also have that potential if we haven't found it yet within ourselves. So, Like any good message, we're going to have three points. The first, we don't have to climb a tree to see the truth, do we? We all want to see things that are going on around us. We are constantly checking our social media on our phones. And before that, and maybe even some of us still, we like that telephone grapevine, don't we? so that we can get up to date on all the good, juicy things that are going on around. You know, we get on our phones, and, you know, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or I don't, I, I listen, at the food bank, we've got all kinds of things that we have to send social stuff out to. I have no idea what some of them are even called or do. But we really want to be tied in. We want to keep up with everything and everyone. And you know, when we hear about a crowd gathering, we slow down to see what we are missing. The best example of that is, have you ever been on the freeway when there's been an accident on the other side and you can't figure out why everything is slowed down and backed up on our side? Because I, all I can think of is these stupid people want to see everything and I can't get where I need to go. Well, there you go. Our nature is to want to be included. Well, we've heard the setting as Jesus walked through Jericho that day. People were flocking around him. And like the rest of us, Zacchaeus, he wanted to know what he might be missing. Zacchaeus was not a tall man, so he climbed up in that tree to see what was going on. And Jesus stopped and spoke to this bad person. He was bad. He wasn't good. We know that. I kind of put the parentheses around it, but the reality is this guy sold out his own Jewish people to work for the Roman Empire and take all of their money, take all of his neighbor's money. He was not a nice guy. We like to read self-help books. We like to look for hidden messages and secrets to a successful and wonderful life, don't we? And we're looking for meaning in all the wrong places. We figuratively spend our days climbing trees to see what is right there before us. There is no need to do anything special to find the truth. We need to look no further than Jesus. So, we don't have to climb a tree to see the truth, not the trees. Jesus comes to our house anyway, and we can be made pure. The name Zacchaeus actually means pure or innocent. And as the chief tax collector, Zacchaeus didn't live up very well to his name for certain. In that time, it was no secret 
and I've said it over and over again, but I want to put the point on it, that Zacchaeus gained his wealth on the backs of his neighbors and countrymen. John the Baptist said that these tax collectors could make things right by simply being honest in their business. Well, we see Zacchaeus' response to the crowd and their anger towards him. And the fact that Jesus set aside all customs to call Zacchaeus out and down to visit his home, despite who he was. Zacchaeus' response shows the change. After the encounter with Jesus, Zacchaeus changed his ways, went above and beyond to make things right. How many of us want to have things right in our lives? Right and righteous. That's not right by the world's standards. That's right when related to the truth of Christ. He finally overcame his past and lived up to his name. When Jesus comes to our hearts and into our lives and in our homes, we can be pure too. Finally, our meaning is found in Christ. Just like Zacchaeus, Jesus can visit our house today. We don't have to wait for him. Before he visits, there are no requirements, no prerequisites. There are no things that we have to do to make us, ourselves right before he comes and visits We don't have to make things right beforehand. He already knows exactly who we are and what shape our homes are in. More importantly, he wants to be there anyways. His presence alone and his love for us will lead us to do things we never thought that we could do. Think about that. We can even admit where we have been wrong and had to make things right, just like Zacchaeus did. We can easily presume that Zacchaeus lived a different, richer, fuller life after this encounter with the Savior. And you and I can also have that richer, fuller life. That experience when we encounter Christ. The beauty of our walk with Christ is that not only are messages like this for the unrepentant sinner, but they are great reminders for us as fellow believers that there is always a richer, fuller life out there with Christ. Sometimes we just lose sight of the path as we take on the dust and dirt of the world. I know that I do. This morning, if you want Christ to visit your home, then it's simply there for the asking. He'll come. No prerequisites, no requirements. If you've gotten a little lost on the path, then it's also as easy as asking Him to come close so that we can renew ourselves. The richer, fuller life that Christ brings to us is for everyone. Not just for the preachers or the elders 
or the people who give more. It's for everyone. It's clearly not about wealth or fame. It's about living a life that is low before Him and allowing Him to temper, temper all of our thoughts and attitudes in life. Like with, like with Zacchaeus, sometimes with people like the Michael Avenatis of the world or that teacher or maybe the person that lives right on your street, we err towards judgment instead of understanding. And we forget that with Jesus and repentance, anyone can be redeemed. Zacchaeus was. Lest we forget our own path to Christ. This morning, we have a beautiful opportunity to come close to the Savior. Whether you're at home or sitting here, allow His love to wash over you and to change you even in these days where there is so, so much evil. Open your hearts, your minds, and your lives to the beauty of the Savior. I'm going to invite Roy to come and sing and share. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we've learned about an unlikely hero today, he is indeed a hero because he changed his life when he came in contact with you, the Savior. Father, may we change our lives as we come in contact with you. May we live richer, fuller lives. May we be a witness to those who need our witness and love those who need your love. Father, thank you for all that you've done in our hearts and in our lives and for all those 
that we may make an impact on by being pure and right and righteous in the way that we live. Forgetting the judgment leads down a dark path, but that we live in your light and in your love. It's in Christ's name we pray and everyone said, amen. Information. I think there's a few things that we need to share. Um, I think there are several ways that you can give in the, in the back uh, plate, but also you can give online. Um, mail your checks to our address. You can give through PayPal. Um, I guess I should admit that I don't even have a PayPal account. Sorry. That's not something. I'm still writing a check. Um, it's the way it is. Um, so we do sincerely appreciate uh, your support for the church, and uh, it allows us to do more and more mission work within our community. The, uh, I think we've got several things coming up, and if you want to get in touch with the pastor, isn't that usually another slide? There you go. There's the pastor's information. I am not exactly sure when he's back in town, but I know that you can reach him through there and uh, if, you, if you need to talk to him. We have a wild game dinner coming up August 14th at 6 p.m. Coach Buddy Anderson will be the guest. If you have not signed up for that yet, you may want to do that today um, or soon um, because I believe at some point they're going to cut off and open that to other folks to come. Wednesday night we have prayer at 5.15, I believe. Bible studies at 6 p.m. Um, and if you don't come, it's a wonderful time. Mary and I are, are here almost every week. Um, that we're able to be here, so it's a good time on Wednesday evenings. Worship next Sunday uh, at 1045, Sunday school at 930. Please avail yourselves to be here and to support um, the work of Christ in this place. So with that, let's, uh, let's stand and do the Apostles' Creed today. We'll say together. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church of Jesus Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I actually had our benediction on my phone. They are useful. That is phones. We will say the Aaronic blessing from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace today. God bless you at home. Amen.